What's up guys, it's your favorite QB coach. Give me six months of your time, I'll give you the best golf swing of your life. So welcome back to the channel. In this particular video, a lot of you guys are always interested in the topic, is the driver swing different than the iron swing? So we're gonna be doing a video that's gonna be discussing this, but specifically, we're gonna be talking about the differences between plane tilts in this particular video. So if you don't know what a plane tilt is, well, this is the perfect video for you. And even if you do know what a plane tilt is, there's a lot of information that you probably didn't know before. So let's go ahead and jump in. But before we get into the video, I wanna give a quick shout out to our sponsor, and that is Kiwi Golf Japan. If you're too busy or you just can't make it out to our locations for lessons, Kiwi Golf Japan is the membership site for you. With over 230 plus videos of golf instruction, we have everything on the site you could possibly want. So go ahead and check out the link down below and now let's get into the video. So to start with this video, I'm sure a lot of you guys when I said plain tilt probably don't even know what I'm talking about. And for the very few that do, you might not even really know what I'm talking about. So to explain plain tilt, let's first explain a plane. I think you guys should get this. So. If I'm swinging back on the golf swing, let's say something like this with my shoulders really flat like this, I'm swinging on a plane, right? So this club shaft right here is trying to resemble the plane. Now, if I tilt that plane, that would be what's called a plane tilt. And that's gonna be the main point of this video. And it's going to help answer the question, is the driver swing and the iron swing different? So to review that section, when we're talking about plane tilts, imagine that plane that this club shaft is resembling, right? This would be the shoulder plane right here. And if it's tilting, that would be a plane tilt. So now that you guys understand that, let's start moving forward. So now the next question you might have is, okay, well, why is a plane tilt important? I understand the whole concept. It's kind of that imaginary plane that you're talking about, the club shaft, it's tilting. But you know, why should I do that? Well, to give you guys the best example of this, Let's say I'm hitting a golf ball off the ground with a seven iron here, and I made a, let's call it a very zero or flat swing plane with no tilt. Well, I would look something like this when I swung and hit the ball. Obviously, if the ball's down there, I'm swinging up here, I wouldn't even hit the golf ball, right? So this is why a swing plane tilt is very important because you need to have tilt to be able to hit the golf ball. Even if it's up on a tee, you need to have tilt to hit the golf ball. No tilts, you're gonna hit way above the golf ball. Too much tilt, you actually might start to duff the golf ball. So this is why it's really important. Let's start moving on. So in this particular video, we are going to be talking about different plane tilts with the driver and the irons. Now, the reason why there should be different swing tilts between the two is because the driver swing and iron swing should be different in this case. So let me explain this case. Let's say that you're one of those people that wanna have a positive four club path. You wanna swing in to out four degrees. Well, if you wanna swing in to out four degrees with your irons versus your driver, you're actually gonna to have to have different plane tilts between the two swings. Cause if you had the identical plane tilts with the driver and the irons, you wouldn't be getting a positive four club path with your driver and then a positive four club path with your irons. So this gets into the concept of D plane and a very tiny part of D plane. But basically what we're trying to talk about here is the more we actually start to hit up on the golf ball, the more this path will be shifted more to the inside relative to the same swing, but you just hit a little bit more down. Versus if I hit a little bit more down on the golf ball, that's going to shift the club path more to the right versus the same swing where you're actually swinging a little bit more level. So because of this, this is why we need to get the plane tilts between the driver swing and the iron different. If we want the same club path, we need different plane tilts. All right, so now we're gonna be getting into iron tilts. We're gonna go through all the tilts of the plane that you need to know. Now, specifically, we're just gonna talk about ranges in a very neutral setting right here, right? We're not trying to get necessarily a positive 10 club path or an out to in negative 10 club path. We're just trying to get a very neutral range here. But the first one that I wanna talk about is gonna be a body part that has a large range of motion, and it's gonna be basically kind of this movement of the arm and the wrist. What this controls is gonna be the club shaft plane tilt. So basically the more and more I go this way, or basically go like this with my left wrist, you're probably going to get the plane tilting flat at first, and then you're actually going to tilt it this way if you do it a lot, right? So this has a massive control in the tilting of the plane, right? If I start to go the opposite way, so if I went more this way with my left arm, 
Then from there, as you can see, you're gonna get the plane tilting a completely different way. It'd be flat at first, but then tilting this way, right? So as you can see, when it comes to the club shaft plane and tilting it or not to tilt it, this is really the largest correlator and something you need to think about when you're trying to control the tilting of the club shaft plane. So now the next body part we're gonna talk about is gonna be basically the arm height because that's gonna drastically affect the arm plane tilt. So to give you an example of this, let's say I get my arms really, really high like this, right? Well, what's going to happen here? The arm plane is gonna be really, really vertical, right? I've tilted it more into this fashion like that, right? So the more I raise my arm. Now, the more I keep my arm from raising and then move it inside with abduction, I'm actually now going to really, really flatten the arm plane, right? So now I'm getting the arm plane more and more kind of almost like this. So as you can see, the arm height is gonna be incredibly important when it comes to the arm plane tilt. And it's something you also wanna think about and try to control. The next plane tilt is gonna be the shoulder plane tilt. So the more and more I drop my left shoulder, as you can see, the plane of the shoulders is tilting more and more this way. The more and more I drop my right shoulder, as you can see, the more and more the plane is tilting this way. So this would be another plane that you can tilt using kind of the shoulder plane, right? Another important point to think about when you're thinking about plane tilts. All right, and last but not least, now we're talking about the pelvis plane tilt. So the more I drop the left side of my pelvis, as you can see, the pelvis plane is tilting more and more this way, right? So going more and more like that. The more and more I drop my right pelvis, the more and more I'm tilting the pelvis plane this way as well. So just like with all of these planes that we've talked about so far, you need to be controlling these tilts of these planes between the driver swing and the iron swing. So what we're gonna talk about now is, now that you understand kind of all the planes we're trying to control, let's start giving you some basic parameters for irons through all of the planes. All right, so we don't make this video too long. When it comes to the club shaft plane, let's just talk about the top of swing club shaft plane that I personally prefer. I don't wanna go into all the subtleties of different methods and what they prefer, as well as I don't wanna talk about P2, P3 and all the positions, right? Cause that'd be a very long video. So keeping that in mind, when it comes to the top of swing club shaft plane, well, first off, we're gonna be using this motion in the wrist, right? So basically pronation in the wrist and then a clockwise rotation from my view of the arm. For that's gonna do, if you do the correct mount, is it's gonna get the club shaft basically mirroring this forearm at this point, which is exactly the checkpoint parameters that we talk about. So when it comes to the parameters here, this is kind of the range. So if you start to get maybe a 10 degree variance on either side, not so big of a deal. If you start to get more than 10 degrees of variance, that's when I think the club shaft positioning or the plane tilt at the top of the swing is either gonna be too flat or too vertical. So to review that section there, make sure that you're having this rotation of the wrist and forearm. And then from there, get the checkpoint of the club shaft mirroring the forearm. That's gonna be the correct checkpoint parameter for the club shaft plane tilt. All right, that's it for you guys on YouTube. But before you guys click off the video, let me give you some quick wrap up points. So when it comes to the differences between the driver swing and the iron swing, you really need to think about first off, do you wanna have the same club path? If you do, and you wanna hit kind of a similar curvature type, then you definitely need to change the plane tilts between the two, that is a must. Now, when it comes to the plane tilts of interest, we're going to have the club shaft plane tilt, we're gonna have the lead arm plane tilt, we're going to have the shoulder plane tilt, and then the pelvis plane tilt. Typically between the driver and the iron, there's definitely some similarities, but if you wanna know the exact differences, well, you're gonna go have to sign up for the membership site and watch the whole video. Other than that, what I want you guys to go do is check out our Kiwi Coach six month program, our physical and online, like, comment, subscribe, share all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next video.